Hi, I'm Brian Walby with Ringo, and today we're going to be talking about what you can do as an MBA applicant if your GMAT score is low. Uh, Ringo specializes in dealing with MBA applicants in that exact situation. And just before we get started, a little background on myself. I'm a graduate of the Kellogg School of Management and work with applicants for Ringo. So just a bit on the admission process uh, to start. The GMAT, of course, um, is, a, is a key factor, but it's, only, it's normally about a 20% weight in the admission, depending on the school. Also included in that, um, in the admission, of course, is your undergraduate GPA, your essays and recommendations, your interview, and your personal history and resume. Now, Ringo created this notion of admission drivers, which are critical factors that influence your admission. And they're based on conversation with admission committees, alumni, students, and analysis of past trends and application results. And examples of this would include things like leadership, communication, persuasion, teamwork, etc. Now the requirements that I mentioned up front, of course, influence those admission drivers. And in particular, your GMAT score influences the analytical skills admission driver, which is used, and the GMAT is really used as a proxy for your academic performance in business school, as well as to an extent a proxy for your professional potential. Key takeaway from today's discussion is that if you have a low GMAT score, um, all is not lost. You still have a shot to be admitted into a, pro into a top program. To do that, you're going to need to provide additional context with um, content in your application with respect to your intellectual capacity to be able to improve on the analytical skills admission driver and also hit upon a well-rounded application. Just a little bit of background on the GMAT itself. You know, these days the average GMAT of admitted students into top programs is uh, measurably above 700, and you'd really like to be in any particular school within the uh, middle 80% band of matriculating students and your GMAT score to have a reasonable chance of admission. But a strong overall application uh, can overcome a weak GMAT, and case in point, if you look at Oringo.com, there's many examples of students listed who had low GMAT scores that were admitted into the top programs. So our main framework for today's discussion in terms of what you can do with a low GMAT score, we have three proposed areas for candidates to address. The first is to frame your intellectual aptitude with other objective measures. The second is to frame your academic experience as more rigorous than that of your peer group. And the third are actions that the, the applicant you can take prior to submitting your application itself. So the first of the three areas in our framework in terms of talking about your intellectual aptitude with other objective measures, what you want to try to do here is provide context, uh, typically as a percentile or rank within your peer group, and try to provide more recent results in your academic and professional history wherever possible. So the examples I'm going to talk about are in reverse chronological order for um, a potential career that, you might, that might be relevant to you. So things that you might want to highlight would include uh, topics such as were you selected to train colleagues at work or in a client setting based on your mastery of a subject? Uh, if you recently completed the professional certification in your area, like the PE professional engineer, uh, were you selected into your firm based largely in, on a case interview process or problem solving analysis, or was your firm particularly selective overall? Did you comp recently complete a, a professional exam where passing would allow you to practice uh, in your region, for example, the bar exam? Uh, grad other graduate school admission tests, like the MCAT or the LSAT. Were you selected for merit-based scholarships, fellowships, or awards, or things like nominated uh, as a top student by your faculty in school, or were you selected to complete research with a faculty member? Um, college entrance exams, your IQ score, high school rank, and even if you skipped a grade, those are some of the things earlier on in your career that you can highlight. Okay, the second part of our framework is uh, talking about your academic experience as more rigorous than that of your peer group. And these are really hardships or complexities that forced you to manage your time in a way that others in your peer group did not face. And again, quantify to the extent possible, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into specifics. So for instance, in school, if you had an above average extracurricular load or significant work experience while in school, definitely provide the uh, hours per week that you are involved and really only stress this area significantly if you were, in, you were way above average relative to your peer group. Examples specifically could include things like if you started a business venture, you know, talk about the background there, the lessons learned, how you spawn the idea, etc. 
if you work full time or part time uh, significantly, say 20 plus hours per week, and again, that's that much more impressive when fewer of your colleagues were in that same situation. Or military service, if you completed that while in school, as a that's a significant um, responsibility uh, as well, in addition to school. While in school, if you had a, a more challenging academic setting, you can frame that in one of the following ways, if true. If you graduated early, and it's, first of all, talk about that and elaborate why. Usually it's because you were either trying to pay back loans faster or you were afforded a great professional opportunity. If you had a double major, which by definition meant that you had a heavier uh, academic workload in terms of average number of credits per term. And if you had a major that was considered among the hardest at your school. Uh, be careful with that last uh, example though. Admission committees already take into account to an extent what your major was and they know for example that engineering was a, is a demanding major uh, in, at most schools. When you describe these circumstances that we've talked about so far in the first uh, two parts of our framework, you do not want to come off as, you're as though you're complaining about your situation. Instead you want to try to frame it in a factual sort of positive way with the, with the lesson of, hey, this is what I took away from this experience and this is, what, this is why it benefited me. So for example, if you had a lot of work experience in school, that might have improved your time management skills, for instance. So now in the first two parts of the framework, we've talked about a lot of ideas. How do you actually place these insights and implement them within your application itself? We believe that it's better to mention these inside your regular essays and CV instead of the optional essay for your application. The art, though, is to come off so that it's not forced into the story in your essays, but rather it's part more of a, of a natural flow. Now, why do we say that we, you'd like to place them in, in your regular essays? Well, if you place it in the optional essay, it, it may appear that you're bringing excuses to the table when you don't want to actually do that. Um, mentioning the accomplishment that sort of belongs to the topic, so to speak, could actually have a, bit, a bigger impact on the reader from the standpoint that it's easier for them to remember facts that are part of a coherent flow as opposed to something separate from the rest of the application. So how do you actually place these in the essay, um, whether it's in the regular or the optional essays? In the regular essays, if it's talking about, or if you're talking about, for example, your, applicants, your, applicant, your background as an applicant, you could say something to the effect of, my childhood shaped the way who I am today, and then somewhere in that essay talk about your high school distinction or SAT scores if that was relevant and specific to you and your situation. Or if you're talking about your career progression, for example, you could say one of the key decisions in, one, in my career in life was thinking about whether or not to pursue business or a law degree. My LSAT score placed me in the top 10% of, of students, but I ended up taking a job in, in the high-tech industry because of my interest in the company that offered me, for example. Within the optional essay, you don't want to just state whatever the, the contextual factors are Instead, take a step back and give an introductory sentence like, I believe my GMAT does not accurately reflect my analytical skills, or I'd like to bring a few facts to the admission committee's attention that might help in evaluating these skills, and then you succinctly go and describe the facts. Uh, the longer, frankly, that it takes you to explain, the more that it may look like you're bringing excuses to the table, so try to do it in a succinct way.